to welcome all of you. 44, is that? And I see another car coming in. Carol Taylor, I just drove up. Where am I going to put I don't know. <laughs> anyway. um, so welcome to Emmaus Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're here. And for those of you who are watching live streamed or perhaps will be watching later on on your smart devices, um, welcome to all of you. To join us in Florida, this is Emmaus Lutheran Church on Pastor Mark Winkler. It is March 21st, and it feels a little bit like a Florida winter. It's cool, it's rainy, it's well, but glad to have all of you here. Special welcome to those of you who are first time guests with us this morning. We have a handmade wooden cross for you, ensure that you get that cross if you've never gotten one before. So, um, I'm, and I wish that I could, first of all, I wish that I could hug all of you on the way out of church today, but that's not going to happen quite yet. Carol and I had our first shot, um, our second shots are scheduled for May, April 9th, so we're going to be coming up on it pretty soon. And I don't know, I'm feeling that the day is going to come sometime, maybe in the foreseeable future, where I'm gonna, we're going to be able to hug each other, and when I do, I'm not that easy. <laughs> um, a couple of things that are important for today. First of all, I had written in my email last that was sent out on Friday that we are going to be having on Wednesday of this week, we are going to have a service of lament and prayer and solidarity for um, it's AAPI, which is Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And especially because of all of the violence that has been. Um, in the news, all of the violence in Atlanta that we've just seen, um, and across our country, and perhaps across the world, and um, and it just seems so timely that and, and I switched it from Wednesday to last night and today, so the service will be a little bit different. I began my um, time here just pouring the water and up in prayer, um, so we're not going to have the prayer at the front this morning. Um, Something else, the work, the Holy Week worship schedule and Easter schedule was up on the announcement page, so you saw that. So Holy Week will be next Sunday already is Palm Sunday. Sunday after that is Easter, Holy Week. On Monday Thursday, we're having parking lot worship out, out in the parking lot, just like we always do. Um, on Good Friday, and that's at 7 o'clock, Monday Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. Good Friday, in here, 7 p.m. Um, on Easter Saturday, we'll have a modified Easter vigil in the parking lot at 7 o'clock, starting next Saturday. All of our worship services in the parking lot on Saturday evening will be at 7 o'clock. We do that because of the time change, and the, the weather is going to increasingly get warmer and okay, hot, right? Just, let's face it, hot. <laughs> So we're going to 7 o'clock starting this coming Saturday. And then the Holy the Easter Saturday will be at 7 o'clock. Easter Sunday sunrise service held by our Memorial Garden at the opposite end of the parking lot. 7 a.m. That's our 7 a.m. Sunrise on Easter Sunday is going to be 7 11 in the morning. So we'll start in, you know, in, in darkness ish. And then um, the sun will come up. While we are having our service, hopefully it will be a beautiful morning. It's not going to be under the, under the portico here. And then Easter regular worship service, not going to be all out joy like we have been, have we, that we have become accustomed to on Easter Sunday. Although last year we didn't have Easter service at all. Carolyn painted the house on Easter Sunday, it just was so long, so long. 
So, um, but anyway, 11 or 10 o'clock on Easter Sunday, we will have our Easter worship here. I think that's all. Oh, um, we have a sound system and that we're trying out, we're just borrowing this. And this is made possible by one of our church members, Bobby Martinez, who was a Saturday night worshiper for a long time. And we're borrowing, um, and still is, but Saturdays, but everything's up in there. So we're borrowing this for a while, and I figured out a way to run our wireless headset microphone through it. So, but mostly this is going to be for outside worship. Let's begin. I think you accidentally said 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday. I didn't hear that. 10 o'clock. I think you accidentally said 11 on oh, Easter Sunday. Oh, Carol says accidentally said 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday, but it's 10 o'clock Easter Sunday morning, and there's no adult study on Easter Sunday. Probably still got it wrong. <laughs> We don't do any standing or singing yet, um, and uh, your your responses will be up on the screen as we worship today. Since the pandemic started in early 2020, there have been more than 3,000 reported incidents of anti-Asian racism, according to the Stop AAP, AAPI 8 an initiative that tracks violence and harassment among Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. In January of this year, these violent attacks targeted the elderly. An 84-year-old Thai man was shoved to the ground as he was taking his morning walk in San Francisco. In the neighboring city of Oakland, a 91-year-old man was pushed down, which caused him to fall face first onto the pavement. For a community whose elders are held uh, are deeply respected and looked up to as the source of communal and filial unity and wisdom. This hits hard. I invite you to a communal confession to show our solidarity with our Asian brothers and sisters. God of all people and the whole of creation, make us into who you have created us to be, for we are all one in This, your response here is for we are all one in Christ. Did you go one, to, one screen too many? Up there. There we go. There we go. God of all people and the whole of creation, make us into who you have created us to be. For we are all one in Christ. Make us your hands, your feet, your eyes, your lips, your body in this world. For we are all one in Christ. Spirit of peace, reconcile us, connect us to yourself and to each other, for we are all one in Christ. You are the source of our healing and hope, for if one hurts, all of us are hurt, for we are all one in Christ. Clothe us, your body in the world, with your love and mercy and grace. Amen. Asian siblings are hurting. How do we, the church, hear their painful cry and act together in solidarity? We pray, make us a clear vision. Are Asians invisible? They are branded as the model minority, therefore not expected to speak up. They cry for justice. Can anyone hear them? We pray, make, make us a clear vision. Asians are feared as a community. Asians have complex cultures and languages so they are generally omitted. How can we, the church, offer our curiosity and respect when we encounter a multitude of gifts in diversity and uniqueness? We pray, make, make us a creation. Asian children are called by many names, most recently coronavirus, or yelled at to go home. When we, the church, ask, who is our neighbor? How can we truly mean it in welcoming words and actions? We pray, Make us a new creation. Asians are used by the mainstream dominant culture to shame and put a wedge against other communities of color. Claiming our calling that all are created in God's image, how can we stand in solidarity with those who are hurting? We pray, make, make us a new creation. 
God's forgiveness is greater than any hurt and pain of the body. For Asian theologies, forgiveness is an invitation to examine and re-examine what constitutes our identity. Not only our individual identity, but most especially our communal identity. May God's forgiveness invite us all to face who we truly are as members of the body of Christ. May this rich promise embrace us all, taking away the pain of our bad body. As a protest against anti-racism, black and Asian ministers have shared stories of embodied hurt and a form of an embodied movement as nonverbal gestures of healing and blessing. In solidarity with our Asian American and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to join me in this embodied blessing and healing. First, I will dem demonstrate a brief meaning and then we'll follow me, and then we'll move together in silence. myself, I acknowledge my own feelings, my own body. Please join me. And now I bow. Acknowledging sacredness, resilience, humility, strength in myself. Now I look around and I see what's around with me. sadness and grief and lament and anger. I bow again, acknowledging sacredness. I hold my hands out and take another big breath. Receiving blessings from God and from one another. And now I touch my heart and, and extend one hand. Heart to heart compassion from my heart to yours. Let's go through them one more time with no words, just in silence. Yet one body. 
The eye did not say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there can be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. Um, you know what the very next verse is? I just finished off here. I said, um, strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. The very next verse. My collar's coming off. I'm falling apart.
This is a calling from God. God gave you the gifts and the heart to be able to do the work that you do. And we need all of your gifts put to work in our communities to make a good and healthy community. Now, I, um, I used to go, um, I used to teach confirmation class. I don't have the paper anymore. Confirmation class. And we would talk to the kids about what a healthy community is. What's a healthy community? What do we need in this community to, to be a healthy community? And, and what kind of jobs, what kind of people? What, what does it take? And uh, they come up with uh, you know, the, the more important jobs. You know, the, the things that people grow up wanting to be when, when they're children. I want to be a policeman, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. Well, what about the other ones? The jobs that are harder to do. The jobs that are dirty and smelly and noisy. Don't we need those too? Oh, yeah, we do. Well, can we, we finish that up being very thankful for every gift that is used for the kingdom of God, for every person that goes to work in the kingdom of God doing their work because every work that can be done is a work to glorify God. We need everyone. And yet there are some people in this world who feel like there are others among us they don't need. And they get violent and angry. That's not right. People's lives are to be taken, not because of who they are or what they look like, but they sound like. Paul points out here in the scripture that I read to you this morning, um, you know, the, the, the Bible, the body cannot be one big nose. People stare at you. The, the body can't be one big, big, big ear. People, people would stare at you for that. And you know what? There are people in the world today that are stared at for what they look like. You know, their eyes are shaped different. The color of their skin is different. Their nose and their mouth are different than yours, than mine. On the inside, we're all the same. We are all part of God's good creation. There's no more Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ. Yeah, and we need everybody. And the Bible says love everybody, love one another. Not love people who are like you, love everyone. Yeah. Martin Luther um, gave us a good insight in this small catechism. He was writing an explanation to the commandments. In the small catechism. The fifth commandment, you know this, you shall not kill. Martin Luther says, What does this mean? We are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. You shall not kill doesn't just have to do with taking somebody's life, but it sure, certainly has to do with that. But it's more. We're not only not supposed to kill somebody, but we're not supposed to hurt them. And how are people hurt? With words and with being pushed to the ground. With, with guns, people are hurt in many, many different ways. People are hurt because they feel pushed to the side in communities where they belong, where we all belong. There might be some wrong things along the way, but we all belong. The Bible says that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. You know, in John's gospel, the word believe is a verb. People who don't even know God can believe because believe is a verb. People who do the will of God without even knowing God they're believing, they're doing, they're acting out a faith that, um, that is inside of them, a belief system that says we take care of people, we love other people, not, not necessarily or only because it's God's will for us, but because it's the right thing, it's the human thing. It's what we should all be doing. 
without fear. Have you ever heard anybody described as being somebody who never knew a stranger? Did you ever hear that? Okay, no way. Yes, yes. Okay, one. Probably you others. Him. <laughs> Him. <laughs> yeah, there you are. Um, yeah, what that means, somebody who's never, never known a stranger, is because even somebody who's, who, who is not known to you, as soon as they walk up and, and there's that moment, that moment of contact where two people meet one another, a sign language will meet one another, and you can become friends just like that. And some people don't see it that way. They see somebody different and they, they see an enemy. That's not Bible. That's not the Bible's way. The Bible says love one another. The Bible says we can't say that we love God and then hate your brothers and sisters. That's not the Bible way. We love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind. We love our neighbor as ourselves. Well, maybe what we need to do is start with ourselves and love ourselves enough to be able to say, yeah, we all belong here. I love myself enough to see that I need you and you need me. I know. That's the godly way. It's the Christian way. And even bigger than that, it's the right way. It's the human way to love one another. God loved us first, and so we are able to love other people. And we do, we, we do things and we say things that build one another up. Not tear them down. This is the way of Jesus. He gave his life so that you and I can live in peace and harmony with each other, so we can live in peace and harmony with everyone. A peaceful way, a way to love and abide with one another, a, a way that we can grow together as sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, people who, people who recognize the gifts that God has given each other and knows that we need one another. All in the name of Jesus Christ.
sin of racism hurts communities of color, fractures God's way for us to recognize the harm caused by racism. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, Paul writes. God's grace in Christ frees us from, quote, the difficult work of recognizing and lamenting racism. We are all part of one body in Christ, called to act with equity, fairness, and justice. God's saving love creates grace-filled spaces within us and within our relationships. God's saving love calls and leads us toward rooting out the racism that continues to infect the body. Let us pray. Within the whole human family, people of color have experienced both interpersonal aggression and structural oppression instead of abundant life. We recognize and lament the harm racism has caused to African descent communities, American Indian and Alaska Native communities, indigenous peoples within Canada, Arab and Middle Eastern communities, Asian and Pacific Islander communities, and Latin communities. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We have assigned the notion of race to human beings created in God's own divine image. We have judged God's beautiful diversity by our flawed and artificial standards. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We have used language and images in ways that equate black and dark with dirt and sin and fail that to welcome the treasures of darkness in God's good creation. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We have accepted practices in our churches and in our society that privilege whiteness over diversity and equity. We have been complicit in how racism continues to exclude and harm people of color. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. When one part of the body of Christ hurts, the whole body hurts. As we listen to people who are harmed by racism, we cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We reflect on our daily interactions with people and communities of color. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We reconsider what we have been taught about race, race and racism. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We contemplate what we have done and what we have left undone. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. We labor to create a loving and safe community for our siblings of color. We cry out to you, hear our lament, O oh God. Holy and merciful God, as your people we commit, recommit ourselves to loving one another as you have loved us. Prepare us for this time of listening and discovery. We pray all of this in the name of the one who ha has made us one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to take out the communion for the body of Christ that you were given on the way in this morning has already been consecrated in preparation of the service. And let us pray together the prayer of Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In the night in which he betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep, he, keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.